So the Lakers have signed Dwight Howard to a non-guaranteed contract. By the way, my name is BDF. Welcome to my channel. Anyway, uh, so Dwight Howard's a Laker. I'm pretty happy about it. I am. Uh, I made a video a couple days ago saying that I thought that Dwight Howard would be a decent addition to the team. Um, you know, I don't think he can do what Boogie can do, but he can give us some of the similar type of experience and uh, pedigree in terms of superstar. Even though neither one of them would have given us what they would have in their primes, we definitely understand that. At the same time, you know, there's something to be said for just sheer uh, experience, talent, uh, having the load on your back, knowing what it means to, uh, to, to put in the grind. And Dwight Howard knows that. I think he's in a good place with his conditioning. He's healed from his injuries, from what I understand. He's 100% ready to go. He's lost some weight. So um, this should be a good look for him. As far as the Lakers are concerned, they've, you know, from what I understand, according to the reportings, um, they've made it very clear that he's on a short leash. Um, and they don't have to pay him a thing before January. I don't want to say what date, but someday in January um, is the deadline for that to take place. So if, if he does something that they don't like if he isn't playing well whatever they can cut him and won't have to pay him a dime so it's a really interesting situation a very humbling type of situation that they've put him in but at the same time I think it's uh it's merited based on his rep reputation and uh some of the things that have taken place plus where he is in his career <clears throat> so I have no real problem with it uh at all now, as it pertains to uh, some of the other options that the Lakers had, I know that Maurice Spates was on the board. Uh, Joakim Noah was up there, who had a very solid season with Memphis last year, a, a bit of a resurgence. Um, and I think that they mentioned that Taco Fall could be released from the Boston Celtics. He's a real hot name out there, a very tall, supremely tall uh, athlete who can, who can do a lot of things for you, of course, with his length. So um, I think ultimately they landed on Howard. I... I guess I would have done the same thing I think it was between him and, and Taco for me I would still like to get the kid if he gets released to be honest with you but um, I don't know where we are with Cap and, and, and all of that in terms of what, what else we can do from here but I do like what we have um, losing Bo Boogie Cousins is going to be a, a pain it's going to definitely be a pain but Dwight Howard should give us another center uh, and basically what we want to do is just make sure we have enough uh, centers on on tab so that um, Anthony Davis doesn't have to play the center position. That's that's the moral of the story. <clears throat> and you want to put someone in there who can adequately relieve him, which is why I think Dwight Howard ultimately came down to the to the choice. The reality is you don't know what Taco is going to give you. He's a, he's a young kid. He's a rookie. It's going to take time. Maurice Spates has been out of basketball for a couple years now. You know, don't know what he can give you. And while Joe King Noah is somebody who's been effective, and like I said, he's coming off a really good year, uh, I don't think there's any confusion about who's the greater player, although I do like what Joe King Noah can do for you on the defensive end of the, of the basketball, rebounding, and he's a fantastic passer offensively, which goes unnoticed, but he's, he's one of the better centers uh, that can pass the ball that, that I've seen. So um, <clears throat> if we would have gotten him, I think we would have been happy for that as well. But I, I never saw him becoming a Laker because I know that the history with him and LeBron James hasn't always been pleasant, to say the very least. So I, I didn't think that the Lakers were, were going to be excited about bringing him in. I do think, however, sorry about that, I do believe that um, he may find himself on the Clippers. I can definitely see them picking up Joe King Noah. Um, he would fit, and he's just another body out there who can do similar things. They like the Rodman type of big men. Obviously, we see that. And we know Joe Kim Noah has that type of energy and that type of aggression. Um, so I can see him slipping right into the Clippers and being a fantastic addition to their team. I haven't heard any rumors about that, but that's just my uh, my observation of how the things are going. Um, so, yeah, it wouldn't shock me if he ends up with the Clips. <clears throat> also, I have a little bit of a, a, a gut feeling right now, being that the Lakers have signed Dwight Howard. Again, I say I don't know what's going on with the cap, but... Um, I could see the Lakers giving Carmelo Anthony that deal. The same deal they gave to Dwight Howard uh, for this season. I, I can totally see them bringing him in um, and just saying, you know what? Just just give us what you got. And if it doesn't work out by January, we'll cut you. And all the same exact same deal uh, that they gave Dwight Howard. Because I don't see there's that there's any um, risk to that at this point. And... Um, 
quite honestly, I went back and watched some Carmelo Anthony highlights from when he was with all three of his tenures, the last couple of years, I should say. I watched his last year in New York, some of those highlights, the Oakley C Thunder highlights and the Rockets highlights, to be honest. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that Carmelo Anthony still, to this very second, has the capability of getting hot. Now, I know that's not something you want to bank on. I know it's not. he's not someone who's going to help you in a lot of other areas. But what I know and what I trust is what I've seen. And his kickstand, his ability to spot up and pop, I don't think that goes away, especially with the type of talent that we have on our team at different positions that can draw attention far away from him. And the fact that he'll have a role that won't require him to really do a whole lot. Um, the more I think about it, especially given the fact that we just signed Dwight and did lose Boogie Cousins, I can really see the Lakers just buckling down and saying, you know what, let's just bring him in as our 12th man, and if it doesn't work out, we'll cut him too. Or, you know, we could trade him at the deadline, no biggie. You know, that kind of thing. I just don't see that, that there would be much of a high-risk situation there. Uh, we need the depth. Losing Boogie may felt like we lost two players, to be honest with you. Bringing in Dwight Howard does not adequately bring what Boogie brought to the table. So I think the the desire to have a player like Carmelo Anthony has increased since that injury. And so that's where I'm coming from with that. Um, so, yeah, I, I can totally see them doing that. I really do. I see it. Um, now, will it happen? I don't know. If he's truly blackballed, then it will not take place. But I don't have any evidence or haven't heard of any evidence in anybody's commentary or any articles that I've read that has given me a solid reason for why he's being blackballed. So either it's a super secret or uh, teams are just assessing him like I've been assessing him and saying that they, he doesn't fit on any of these teams. And if he happens to fit, we either don't want him for reason A or we don't need him because we're concerned about things off outside of basketball. So it's like uh, I can see where each and every owner might have come to the same conclusion about Carmelo. So if he's not blackballed, I totally see the Lakers bringing him in if, if, if the cap space and everything works out. I see that. <clears throat> now, you know, we need the depth. We really do. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Dwight Howard, this is pretty much your last chance, in my opinion. I don't think you get another opportunity in the league after this. I'm actually surprised you got this one, to be honest. Um, things didn't go well in, in the first tenure with L.A., but as you said, you know, timing was off. Maybe in another somewhere down the road you'd like to come back and here we are so i'm not surprised that this has turned out this way um hopefully we can get a healthy season out of you and that's that's really what it's all about you know no pressure to really dominate in any way or or, or play too many minutes not even play every game probably but a just solid rebounding um and the ability to run the floor and finish that's really all the lakers need the defense, you know, stay in front of guys. That's it. And uh, I, I believe Dwight Howard has gotten better at the line than he has since 2012. I think he's improved some. So I'm looking forward to seeing if he can can stay on the upside of, of, of 60%, 65% from the line. Uh, anyway, that's, that's all I got to say at the moment. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying themselves. And, yeah, peace out. Thanks for watching. PDF.